Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin and this is my wife Sarah. Well, thank you so much for coming back for week 7 of our Cornish Cross versus Freedom Rangers experiment uh, to see which one is going to end up being the best meat bird for our homestead. Kevin and I have been raising meat birds for probably the last 7 years, but we've only raised the Cornish Cross meat chickens. But lately, we've been seeing and hearing a lot of buzz throughout the homesteading community about another type of meat chicken called the Freedom Ranger or the Red Ranger. And a lot of people are switching over. So we decided that we would do this experiment to see uh, if all of the uh, hype about these Freedom Rangers uh, actually has some merit to it or if uh, the Cornish Cross really uh, can hold on to their title of being kind of the the, the king of the meat birds. Uh, so uh, we've been doing this experiment now since the chicks were uh, two days old, which is when we received them from the hatchery. And uh, we thank you so much for joining along every week as we've watched them grow. So we bought and started with 25 Cornish Cross chicks as well as 25 Freedom Ranger chicks. We've been raising both the Cornish Cross and the Freedom Rangers in the same type of living environment the way we have been raising meat chickens for the last seven years and that is in chicken tractors. So the Cornish have their own chicken tractor, the Freedom Rangers have their own chicken tractor with the exact same setup and every single day they get moved to a new patch of grass where they have a clean environment, lots of grass and bugs to uh, forage for but as, as well as a standard um, meat chicken feed and water. Now the feeding schedule that we use when we raise meat chickens is uh, 12 hours on, 12 hours off with their feed. So every morning at 7 a.m. we give them their feed um, and every night at 7 p.m. we take their feed away. Now we have had some questions about that as to why uh, we do that. Um, the real reason is uh, to uh, slow down the growth enough that they can develop uh, without growing too fast. Uh, but in reality, you guys, if you think about it, by 7 p.m. it's dark. Uh, the chickens really aren't eating at, you know, overnight anyway. Um, so, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, that that's the way we do it. We've always done it that way. It works really well, so we continue to do it. Uh, if you ever want to try it a different way, uh, feel free. Uh, but the, the premise behind it is to slow down their growth uh, so that they don't grow too quickly. And this isn't something unique to our homestead. This is actually a feeding practice and process that is recommended by the hatcheries. Uh, we start ours at three weeks with the 12 on and 12 off because that's worked best for us. Now a couple things that we wanted to address this week uh, because of questions and comments that we've been getting. Uh, first of all is again uh, we wanted to reiterate the fact that the Cornish Cross and the Freedom Rangers are both hybrid chickens. Right. Uh, what that means is that they are a mix of other chickens um, and that you couldn't just uh, keep a pair of them to reproduce and end up with uh, the same type of chicken. So neither breeds are a GMO bird, but neither breed are a heritage breed. So we've had a few people question this past week as to whether or not we're going to keep some of the Freedom Rangers as egg layers uh, after this experiment. Uh, the answer for us is no. Uh, I know some of you have said that you have done that. Uh, for us, uh, we already have a very good uh, laying flock of dual purpose chickens uh, that we keep uh, separate. Uh, we don't, you know, let mix them with our meat birds. And uh, that is our flock not only for eggs, but also in a, uh, you know, survival type situation. Those are our chickens that we could, you know, hatch our own and continue to raise those for meat, even though they're less efficient than the meat birds. Uh, the meat birds, from what we're seeing, and if you go back and watch this whole series, um, even the Freedom Rangers, uh, they just eat too much uh, to really be considered, you know, a good egg-laying chicken, in our opinion. Yeah, so financially, bottom line, uh, it just doesn't make sense uh, with how much they eat to keep them around to produce eggs. Right. They're, they're designed to be a meat bird where you should raise them for a certain amount of time and then process them. And so that's what we'll be doing with them. Just to answer that question for those of you who have asked. And in general, the egg layers are much more efficient at uh, eating and producing the eggs and, and growing than a meat bird are. The other question that we've gotten quite a bit is, 
Well, if you're trying to be self-sustainable, why would you raise either of these breeds since neither of them are self-sustainable? And I agree 100% with that sentiment, uh, which is why we have the flock of dual-purpose chickens uh, that we can hatch our own and raise those uh, in the situation that we would need to. Um, the bottom line is why do we do these now? It's because these are so much more efficient in how quickly they produce meat for our family so while we are able to get them it just makes the most financial sense to uh, raise these and uh, you know be able to raise basically a year supply of meat uh, which for our family is 50 chickens uh, we can raise you know a year supply of meat in eight weeks with the cornish cross and we'll see how long it takes uh, with the freedom rangers so uh, without further ado, let's get on to the uh, weigh-in for the week. Uh, as usual, we're going to start this week with the Freedom Rangers, and we'll see how they are weighing in, and we'll compare that to last week, and then we'll do the same for the Cornish Cross. Now, like every other week, we are also weighing their feed. That is not super exciting video, so we've already taken care of that. We'll share those results at the end, uh, but let's get started with weighing the chickens. Just like other weeks, we're going to weigh five of the Freedom Rangers and five of the Cornish Cross. We forgot to tell you that we're actually coming to you from inside the greenhouse today because it is a yucky, drizzly, cold day. So we're running out to grab the chickens and running back with them so that we don't get super duper wet. So let's get started on weighing these Freedom Rangers. Freedom Ranger number one. Four point nine seven pounds. Freedom Ranger number two. Four point five eight. Number three. Four point nine eight. Number four. Four point one six. And number five. Four point five two. All right, Cornish Cross number one. Seven point six pounds. Seven point six seven pounds. Number two. Six point nine. Number three. Six point six eight. Number four. Six point seven seven. And number five. Six point nine two. All right, so we've got all the chickens weighed, we've got all the feed weighed, and, the and numbers. so you guys know what that means. Just like other weeks, it means we need to take a brief pause so we can do all of our nerdy chicken math and come back out and give you guys the final numbers. All right, so we're back. We have the results for the week, and Sarah's going to start off, as usual, with the Freedom Rangers. Yes. So, their average weight this week is 4.64 pounds. They have, each bird has eaten 14.58 pounds of feed. This week, they have gained 1.02 pounds since last week. Which is pretty good. I was actually pretty surprised by that. Yeah. And their feed conversion is 3.14 pounds, which means for every 3.14 pounds of feed they eat, they gain one pound. And their total feed consumption that they've all eaten together since the day they arrived on our homestead at two days old is 364 and a half pounds of feed total that they've eaten. Right, so they're on their eighth bag of food right now. Yes. All right, so now for the Cornish Cross. Uh, this week, their average weight was 6.99 pounds. Uh, their feed to date uh, per bird has been 15.61 pounds. Uh, this week they gained 1.84 pounds. Uh, 
and their feed conversion as of right now is 2.23. So as Sarah said, that means they've had to eat 2.23 pounds of feed to gain one pound of body weight. Uh, to date, uh, now remember, we, we lost three of the Cornish Cross right at the beginning, uh, so we only have 22 of those. So they have eaten 343.42 pounds of feed so far. Uh, but I did the math to make it seem like we still had 25 to make it even with the uh, Freedom Rangers. And if we still had 25, they'd be at 390.25. So they'd be a little bit ahead of the Freedom Rangers in the amount of food they ate. Uh, but they also weigh a lot more. So, all right. So let's compare the two uh, for the week. So average weight, again, uh, the Cornish Cross come out ahead for the week. Uh, they are 2.35 pounds uh, heavier than the Freedom Rangers. And remember, they're exactly the same age. They were hatched on the same day. Uh, so almost two and a half pounds heavier on the Cornish Cross. Um, as far as feed, now they've only, get, they've only eaten a pound more per bird to be two and a half pounds heavier. So um, again, kind of a big deal one year uh, considering the economics of raising them. Uh, weekly gain, uh, the Cornish, you know, gained... 0.82 pounds more than the Freedom Rangers this week. So over three quarters of a pound more by the Cornish this week. But this is one area where I have to say this week, the Freedom Rangers really surprised me. They gained over a pound this week. The last two weeks, they've only gained like a half a pound. Now, as far as feed conversion, again, this is an area where it just seems like the Cornish are outperforming the Freedom Rangers. The Cornish have had to eat 0.91 pounds less of food uh, to gain uh, the weight. So again, that, that's a significant result when you're looking strictly at the economics of raising uh, these two birds. Now, while the Cornish seem to be pulling ahead in uh, most areas, we do want to note that uh, with the average weight for the Freedom Rangers being 4.64 pounds at week 7, that is really ahead of schedule according to what the hatcheries say that they will weigh. They're saying that they'll weigh 5 to 6 pounds by 9 to 11 weeks, okay? Right. And we're at week 7 and at 4.64 pounds. Right, so, so we're almost at what they're advertising is, you know, 5 to 6 pounds is their, the heaviest they should get. Um, and we're almost there at week seven, right. so uh, we're impressed by that. Um, you know that that is. But they're ahead of schedule for their breed. Right for their breed, right. they're doing really well. So uh, that's where we're at for the week. Um, now we need to address uh, what's going to happen next week. Mm -hmm. uh, next week, the Cornish will be eight weeks old. We always butcher them between. Uh, we always process our birds between seven and eight weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Right now they're at seven pounds. Uh, our goal is always to get them to seven and a half to eight pounds before we process. So basically, because the Cornish are gaining about one and three quarters pounds a week now, and currently their average is seven pounds, it looks like we're going to be butchering next week at some point, depending on weather and depending on you know how they're doing because of our typical schedule to butcher between seven and eight weeks and add about eight pounds. Right, so uh, uh, that video will be coming out next uh, Friday, just like uh, they have been all along, uh, but just know we may up and end, end up recording that one earlier in the week. Uh, just we'll be weighing them along the way to see, and as soon as they get to that, you know, when the average is over seven and a half pounds, uh, we'll be starting to process. And when we process the Cornish, uh, we're also going to process three of the Freedom Rangers at right. the same time, um, regardless of what size they are. Um, and then the rest of the Freedom Rangers we're going to continue to raise at least another week, maybe two weeks beyond that, depending, yeah, we'll on, depending on weather and, and other things. But um, we'll be, you know, keeping those going so that they get to that 9 to 11 weeks, which is what the hatchery recommends you raise those at. Um, but uh, we will be butchering three of them the same day we do the Cornish, just so we can start to do some comparisons. Right. So you guys, I hope that this series is ending up to be as interesting and informative for you guys as it has been for us. I'm so glad we, that we've done this series. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we've been able to present all of this information to you guys from the homesteading community. Yeah, it's really been nice because honestly, it's forced us 
to take a hard look at these numbers, which sometimes you get so caught up in raising things um, that, you know, and, and life gets busy, that you don't take the time to really analyze uh, exactly what you're doing. So this has been uh, a great series for us uh, as well. We hope to do more things like this down the road with other animals and, and other things. So uh, if you're enjoying this, let us know. Um, I know a lot of you already have let us know, but, uh, you know, let us know if there's other comparisons you would like to see uh, that we can do uh, maybe next spring or something like that. Right, and we're excited to bring you the end results of all of these. We've got some exciting videos coming up to wrap up this series. Uh, and I'm really interested to do the taste test. That's... I'm ready for the taste <laughs> test. That's what I'm ready for. I'm really looking forward to that. So you guys, uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Thank you to all of our traditionalists that come back and watch all of our new videos five days a week. If you know somebody that would enjoy this series or our channel in general, please go ahead and share it with them. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.